So again, then welcome. My name is Kathy Nelson. I'm the CEO and founder of the Photo Managers, and I'm here with Lita Bunting, who I'm going to let tell you a little bit about her background in a moment. I did just want to make sure that the uh, we have a lot of people sign up for this course. We have many members of the Photo Managers, but I think a lot of people who aren't members as well. And the focus of today's class is really all about people who make photo books at for clients as a business and how to price it and all those struggles that people have around that. So if you haven't done that yet, or you're thinking about that, then you are in the right place. If you were thinking that you were going to learn how to make a photo book, then stay with us, but that's not the focus of this uh, webinar. So we are real clear in the descriptions, but I know how it is. A lot of times we just jump into things and I uh, want to make sure we have clear expectations. And so uh, please put your questions in the chat. We will, um, Somebody's walking into coming into Bradley Airport near me this weekend. Probably not far. Uh, go ahead and put your questions in the chat. We will answer all your questions at the end. And so again, I'm really excited. Lita has been a member. I just asked her about how long. I feel like I've known you a while now, since 2017, so five and a half years. And her focus, uh, she'll tell you a little bit about her journey, but her focus is on creating photo books and she's kind of cracked the code, which it can be very complicated to know how much do I charge and how do I figure all that out? So we're excited to bring her expertise to you and a course that she's launching around this topic. Lita, take it all away. All right, great. Hi, everybody. Um, I did prepare a presentation with slides, so I'm going to share my screen and start that, and hopefully there won't be any technology foes, but bear with me um, because um, technology isn't always my friend. So I'm hitting share. And I'm gonna, okay. So do you see you have, my cover slide? We do, and on the right you have your, uh, if it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother yeah, me. Yeah, well, it bothers me, but I'm not, it's not letting me change it. <laughs> it did earlier when we tested I know, it. when we practiced, which is why I wanted to do this. Oh, there we go, yay. Okay, so uh, welcome. Um, my dog says welcome to you too. I wanted to welcome, I think that we've got photo organizers, aspiring photo book designers, and anyone else who simply is curious about designing photo books and making a profitable business out of it. I'm happy and a little bit nervous to be here with you today to share with you some of my tried and true ways of figuring out how to price the cost of a photo book when designing for someone other than family or friends or for yourself. It could be a really scary thing to pull together a proposal that has one too many zeros after it. I mean, the first time I looked into outsourced photo book design and found pricing online, I saw someone who, whose book started at $500. And that was just the starting price. My jaw pretty much hit the floor. It probably also didn't help. My mother-in-law had found the same photo organizer here in town and had suggested that I just go work for her. And so I don't know what shocked me more, that I should drop everything that I was doing and work for someone else, which I didn't wanna do anymore, or that a 20 page book could cost $500. So needless to say, I kept at it, started my own business, and I got to do what I absolutely love. And I got to really dig into photo book design. And I do it on my own terms. So for you, I have a few questions today, which I'm going to answer too, but my questions are, do you struggle with marketing yourself? Are you afraid of competing against Shutterfly? Because why would someone pay you if they're willing to do it for free? And do you wish you knew exactly how to price a photo book? So I'm going to address all of these questions for you today. And I'm going to share with you some of my own experiences that have led me to where I am today. So this service really is not for everyone. So it's valuable to know who you are marketing to. And a lot of you on this call may be DIYers. So you have the knowledge and the ability to do this yourselves. And you wouldn't necessarily hire someone to design a book for you. I learned early on that I would not be my own ideal client. First, I am way too picky and particular about the order and grouping of my photos when it comes to books. And second, I would definitely not spend 
the money on this service because I have lots of other places that I would rather spend money, like finishing the addition in my house right now. So, but I am here to tell you that there are people out there who not only need our service, but want it as well. And those are the clients you're going to be designing books for. Those are the clients that will gladly pay for these services. So when I show you what you need to do to accurately price a photo book, you will gain a boost in your confidence so that you can ask for your price. This is a luxury industry. And although I knew that going into this, I did not feel comfortable asking for luxury prices. But before we get too deep, I just want to mention that if you think you need to have a background in photography, home organizing, tech, or something creative, think again. My education came with an engineering degree and my career started in commercial construction. This line of work is not known for creativity. My biggest takeaway from my construction management career was being able to organize a project and my love for spreadsheets. You will see that I rely on spreadsheets as the launch pad for pretty much every project I have. After corporate America, I segued into the nonprofit sector. I ended up working closely with the business manager, which is where I gained my very limited accounting knowledge. I bring that into my business ownership as I would have been even more clueless about QuickBooks had I not processed payments and balanced the books with my boss. I've been in business for over six years and to date, I've designed over a hundred books whose invoices have totaled over $95,000. So we all have backgrounds that vary and we all have something to bring to the table. And it was while I was working in the nonprofit sector that I decided to launch my own business. It was the middle of December and I was up super late working on a family year in review book. I used to be completely on top of our books and we'd wrap them up on December 31st, order them and have them delivered before the end of January. So while pulling together our photos and designing the book, I thought to myself, wait a second, this is completely nuts. I can't possibly be the only working mom with two little kids working on a creative project at the 11th hour. I just love this though. And I could do this. I could do this for others. Wouldn't that be fun? So fast forward to me launching my business and working with my first clients. I'm a bundle of nerves and have no idea how long my projects are going to take. And I have no idea how much they're going to cost to print. On top of that, my first business model had me charging only for my time and that I was charging my clients the actual cost of the book and passing it through to them. No discounts used and saved for me and no markups. Does any of this sound familiar to anyone? Does anybody else feel nervous about submitting a price for a book? If so, that's totally okay because we all have to start somewhere and we all have to build up to what we're comfortable doing. So I'm going to show you a quick snapshot of my very first invoice, okay? I had a different rate for organizing photos in the book versus designing them. Because in my mind, selecting the photos wasn't as high value as designing the book. I'll also point out that these rates are lower than what we charge our baby or what our babysitter charges us. So again, I was nervous and very unsure of myself. This invoice would not fly in today's day. So that first invoice was for a friend, as most of my clients, my first few years in business were people I knew, whether they were friends or co former coworkers or people in my neighborhood. Remember earlier when I asked if you struggle with marketing outside of your own inner circle? If anybody said yes, I hear you. I was right there too. And why not? Because our friends and family could be our biggest advocates. They can be the ones who refer us to their friends. And relying on them is not bad and it's not wrong, but they can't be all that we're doing. We need to scream from the rooftops about this awesome service that we can provide. We need people who don't know us, who find us and seek out our services, not hire us because we're their friends and begging for work. I mean, I really felt like I was begging. I worked solidly for three years doing books for family and friends before my first non-friend, non-family client came along. And I, I can have you guys put in the chat and you can guess where my first client came from. I can't see the chat, but I'll see it later. But 
My first non-friend client was a referral from a fellow photo organizer. Um, yep, someone in the very same industry that we all work in. Whereas some people would think that we're all competitors. I learned very quickly that we don't need to compete, whether rather we can partner and we can help each other. So by working together and being collaborative, I got my first non-family, non-friend client, and I got confidence. And anybody want to guess what happens when you get confidence? My language changed. My attitude changed. My self-confidence changed. I no longer felt like I needed to depend on my inner network. And when you start to work with clients outside of your own circle, you get that boost of confidence. So from there, I got more clients. And I started networking more and I happened to sit next to someone at a networking event who had just come back from the trip of a lifetime to Antarctica. And she wanted to gift her family a book showcasing their amazing vacation. Thousands of photos to cull through and over 175 pages of design. And I had my first mega project. So how do you find someone like that? You need to talk and talk and talk and network and network and network. It's how, how many people you talk to can just explode. And we are not in a well-known industry. So when I think about my con connections and how clients have found me, it's through networking. I don't really advertise and I certainly don't do as much social media as I should, but I do go out. And now that the world is opening up again, you can too. And then after you've gone out, Follow up with the person or people that you felt a natural connection with. They're not necessarily going to become clients, but they can refer you to their network. So places to start networking are your local chamber of commerce, a young professionals group, a neighborhood meetup, social speed networking events, women's groups, men's groups. Think of like um, for women, we've got a Women Belong, We Sews those types of events, um, BNI groups, and of course you could network on social media. But moving beyond work-related groups, think about golf courses, a gym class, a yoga class, school functions. Anywhere that a group of people will be hanging out is a place where you can network and talk about your business. And then slowly but surely you move away from only your own inner circle and build up your, your own professional network. All right, so let's move on to figuring out why would someone pay you to design a book if Shutterfly will do it for free? So I'm going to ask if anyone has ever used the Shutterfly free service. And if so, were you happy with it? I have, I have used it for sure, because if I'm going to be competing against someone, then I have to know what I'm up against. So I used them when they charged $9.99 for their design. And I used it twice, thinking that maybe the first time I just was um, being too picky or too critical. And maybe if I wasn't so picky, I would like it the second time, but I didn't. And I still you know, thought it would benefit me to test it out. So if I'm going to be charging an hourly rate, and my hourly rate is definitely more than $9.99, and it's going to take me a few hours, then I better know, you know what I'm up against. So what I saw in my um, design books was not what I wanted in a finished product project. Photos that were insignificant ended up being a whole page. And the photos that were important were teeny tiny. And events got mixed up. Page spreads didn't follow sequence and the layouts were sloppy to me. So when storytelling is a priority, then having the photos sequenced and grouped properly is a big priority. So for example, if you take a look, in this top example, the top three photos on the left were in Florida. My kids are in Florida. And then there's two random photos of my dog and a park picture and the invitation to my daughter's first communion, all on one page. And then down below the second spread that's below that, it's another fury of, the, of events where there's kids at an ice skating event and a daddy daughter event, and then a synchronized swim meet and Easter on the next page. So way too much happening for my liking. So my experience with trying the design for you service, I was hugely disappointed. Does that mean it's a bad service? No, not at all. 
because the images on their website are great. Even these images on these, these pages look nice. It just didn't work for me. So people do use it and they love it. And those people are not our ideal clients. So how do you respond when someone compares you to Shutterfly? That, that could be tough for sure. And a slightly com uncomfortable conversation because that person who's questioning likely places value on different things than you do. So the goal should be to figure out what that person or what your potential clients value the most. Do they value their own time? Do they value their money? Do they value their memories or the power of telling their stories? I read a story the other day that put a good perspective on this. I'm going to share it with you. You may have seen it as well because it's made its way through Facebook and Instagram. So I'm not the author of this, nor do I know the source. But it starts with a dad who says to his daughter, well, honey, you graduate with honors and I'd like to gift you this car. I got it several years ago and it's a pretty old car. But before I give it to you, I want you to take it to the used car lot downtown. Tell them you want to sell it to them and see how much they offer you. So the daughter went to the used car lot and returned to her dad and said, well, dad, they offered me $1,000 because it looks really worn out. And the dad said, okay, well, take it to the pawn shop, see what they have to say. So the daughter made her way to the pawn shop and returned to her dad and said, the pawn shop offered me 100 bucks because he said it's too old of a car. So the dad asked his daughter to go to a car club and show them the car. So the daughter did as she was asked. And she came back and she said, wow, dad, there were so many interested buyers. They were offering $100,000 for the car. They recognized that it's a Nissan Skyline R34, which apparently is an iconic car and sought out by many. And the dad said to his daughter, so the right place values you the right way. If you're not valued, do not be angry. It just means you're in the wrong place. Those who know your value are those who will appreciate you. Never stay in a place where no one sees your value. So why did I share that story? Well, because we offer value that is recognized by some, but not all people. So instead of trying to convince someone, just move on and know that you're not with the right people. So you as a service provider and a book designer are offering so much more than just the design of a book. And that is certainly something that is hard to quantify and hard to explain in an on-the-spot question. If someone were to compare my services to Shutterfly, I'd like to tell them to just run with it on their own and I don't engage or defend my pricing. But what I also try to do is pivot the conversation and talk about a project that I'm passionate about or a recent completion. For example, it could go something like this. Well, I do hope you have a great experience with Shutterfly but I just love helping my clients with their stories so much. I'm just now wrapping up the 15th year of year in review books that I've been doing with one of my clients. We started with a 2005 book and we're making our way to current and we just wrapped up 2020. She's got three kids who are crazy busy with sports and activities. So she's so appreciative of this service that I can provide for her. Every couple months, she gets another book or two since some years are split in two volumes and they get their trip down memory lane. She has peace of mind knowing that her stories are preserved. She has the uniformity of the books all being the same shape, size, and coloring, and she has downloadable JPEGs of the books for her own personal use if she ever needs or wants them. By pivoting the conversation, I took the attention off of the Shutterfly offering and talked about the storytelling, consistency, and benefits I bring to my clients. Not to mention, the value of the service we bring. So think about it. How would you pivot the conversation? We all have our own personal limits, limits on how much time we want to spend on something, limits on how much money we want to spend on something. And just because something is free doesn't mean that it's good. And simply because something's expensive doesn't mean that it's bad. But we can't convince our clients what should be important to me. We just share, build the relationship, build the trust, and let them decide. Other points that I try to weave into the conversation is I tell them that they don't need to organize their photos before getting them to me to design a book. So many people are overwhelmed with the mess of a digital collection that they have. But if all that they want 
is a book, it's okay. I'll still design it. And I won't organize per se first. It's not an ideal situation to call a collection that's messy and just try to select the, the photos for a book, but it can be done, especially if you've got the right tools. I also tell them that the books I design come with full rights to a digital copy of that book that can be replicated at any time because I design in um, an outside program and they get those JPEGs. So again, the priority here is to show value and how you are solving a problem for your client. If we're being compared to the consumer facing programs strictly based on cost, we won't win. Our value is in the service we provide. So let's talk now about how to figure out the actual cost of a book. First, we need to think about the components of what goes into a book. There's the time it takes to select the photos, then the time to design the book, time to go back and forth with the client on drafts and edits, and time to load the design into either a sharing platform or the printing program. So far, it's all been time. So having a handle on your own time and metrics is one huge component. The other factors that impact your pricing is the actual cost of the book. So unless you print and bind your own books, this is dictated by the vendor you choose to work with. Now, there are some really, really expensive and exquisite book printers. And there are really some really cheap ones out there too. The actual cost of a printed book can fluctuate anywhere from $20 to $500, and that's not even marked up. So how do you choose which vendor to print with? Well, some of this can come from the client. Not that they will know a vendor by name, but by you sharing samples or describing the different finishes and attributes available for a book, they will tell you what their end vision looks like. This includes the type of paper used and the cover materials, the type of binding, and then the other special attributes like debossing or gilding. And then you work with the printer that meets those needs. For me, I print with a partner of the photo managers. It's a professional print lab that pro photographers use. I do not print with Shutterfly. I did have a client that uploaded all her photos into the Shutterfly system, and I did her books in Shutterfly for several years, but we have since moved away from that platform. However, some clients really like having all their photos in one place and like the ease of ordering from there. And that's fine if that's what your client wants. It is up to you to guide your clients to get the best possible product for the budget that they have. In my mind, if they're already spending a few hundred dollars to pay me to design, but end up with a product that's mediocre in print, I'm not doing them any favors. To me, it's about finding that perfect balance of a high quality book without super high end prices. Or if the occasion calls for it, then printing with that truly exquisite printer so that the client gets the luxury look and feel that they want in a book. So to show you how I determine the cost of a book, I'm going to move away from the slides and do a live demo in my favorite program, Excel. So bear with me as I exit out of this presentation, move into Excel and voila, there we go. All right, so here we go. I'm going the wrong way here. All right. So what you have here is a spreadsheet that I created many, many years ago, and it has gone through many iterations. Don't mind all the errors right now. It's only because um, numbers don't like being divided by zero. So once I start filling in numbers, all those will go away. The yellow cells, I call these little boxes cells. Um, the yellow cells mean that is information that needs to be inputted by me. Um, if it doesn't have a yellow cell, it means that there's a built-in formula already in there. The green is variable. Those are variables that are usually dictated by the vendor um, or just information that I, I know as far as pricing. I have inputted some dummy numbers or some actual numbers. It's just to get through this exercise. So we're going to start at the top and I'm just going to go through this worksheet and you're going to see uh, how a, a number gets popped up. All right, so we are going to start with an hourly rate. I'm gonna, for today, I'm gonna put in $65 for the hourly rate, okay? From there, 
we enter the average photos per page. Now this changes based on what kind of book I'm designing, typically a year in review or a vacation. Um, it usually is about four pages per, four photos per page, that's not per spread. So if it's four per side, it's eight. Um, if it's a wedding or a bat mitzvah or bar mitzvah, it's usually two to three because those usually are professional. But for today, we're going to pretend this is a vacation book and it's going to be four photos per page. So as you see, there's some formulas that have already popped up some numbers. Now, the number of original photos, this is what I get from a client. So if they have selected all their photos and they send me a thumb drive with the photos they want in the book, that's what goes in here. Um, or if they want me to call, then they send me everything that they have. So for today, I'm, I'm using a lot of four. So I'm going to say they sent me 440 photos. So the next line is actually a formula. And I say usually when a client sends me photos, only about 20% of them is they're usable. There's so much junk and they, they're not necessarily book worthy. So number of photos in a book takes... Um, the number of original photos and multiplies it by 0.2. Then the number of projected pages, that's a formula. It takes the total number of photos in a book and divides it by the average photos per page. And then we just, you know, that's number of pages. So the number of spreads, a lot of book pricing comes in price per spread versus price per page. So I divide uh, by two to find out how many spreads there are. Okay, I know I'm going through this fast. We can answer, I can answer questions later. So um, I'm going to come down to upgrades. Here in the um, green section, I have pricing already inputted. So if I want an upgraded cover, I would just put a one in there. And so I've upgraded the cover. Um, so I'm not gonna deboss it, but I definitely am gonna white label. Absolutely, without a doubt, I will always white label because I certainly don't want my clients to know where if I'm printing with a consumer facing program, I don't necessarily want them to know. Um, packaging, yes, I will add some special packaging. And for markup, I'm gonna mark this one up 50% today. Okay, so that gets me to the cost of the book. So the rest here, I'm going to scroll down and now we're talking about the um, my time. So culling, that is a formula. I can go through about a thousand photos per hour. So this is a formula based on the number of photos that I receive from a client. Then design time, that is also a formula. And for this exercise, I'm saying that I can design 10 pages per hour. So those two are formulas. So photo editing, this is if I need to send these out to um, outsource photo editing. I'm not going to edit any photos for this particular um, project today. I'm going to say it's going to take me half an hour to design the cover. I'm going to say it's going to it's going to take me half an hour to load it into the online gallery. I'm going to think that this client is going to be particular with edits, add in an hour there. Um, Let's see, ordering and final touches, another half hour. And we're not gonna expedite the project, although with the holidays around the corner, this could definitely um, be an issue. And then it comes down, there is a built-in contingency productivity factor, which is also a formula. And out pops the total cost for the book at $617.51. So, um, I know I went through that fast. I'm going to try to go back to here. All right. Um, okay. So how fun was that? I, I swear, I love Excel. So um, for anyone who shares my passion, you know, we, we can collaborate on uh, spreadsheets because I think they're fun. But I also know that spreadsheets and these numbers can be super overwhelming and there's so many numbers to contend with. Um, and it, it takes practice and sometimes the formulas won't make sense. So it is important for you to get comfortable with your own numbers and know exactly how the price of a book gets built up because you're, you're not just dumping photos onto a page. You're not a machine. So you are meticulously placing, editing, cropping, and telling a compelling story using photos. So you care about how all this, excuse me, how all of this comes together. And you know, you, you'll probably think I'm nuts, but I actually want you to enjoy playing with these numbers. 
see how different scenarios play out and what that means for your business. This is not supposed to be scary, even if it is initially. So once you get comfortable and you realize that you're worth it, you'll be golden. So I understand that some of you may still be overwhelmed with all this information, um, especially um, this last section with the spreadsheet. So if that's you, I invite you to consider taking this newly launched course um, hosted by the photo managers called Photo Books Made Profitable. Um, it, it's focused on ways to be profitable in the business of designing books. And there's five modules that consist of determining the viability of the photo book design business, learning how to determine your own metrics, especially as it relates to timing and hourly rates, identifying a variety of different pricing strategies that caters to the way your brain works, because there's right-brained and left-brained people, and how to effectively and efficiently execute your project. And lastly, getting into the right mindset. So on top of that, you'll receive a PDF for providing a white glove service, which is critically important in this luxury industry, a 27 page workbook, two Excel spreadsheets, the Excel spreadsheet I just reviewed and full access to a private Facebook group with other course attendees. And so far I have received some feedback from people on, you know, who've taken the course and um, Rachel says photo books made profitable is great for those struggling with confidence and mindset when it comes to pricing photo book design services. It also covers pricing and packaging best practices. The modules are cohesive and offer many nuggets to take away and implement in your own business. I highly recommend this course from anyone from beginners to seasoned pros. And Kate said photo books made profitable is great for those. Oh, sorry. I just read that one. Uh, just when I thought I had all my ducks in a row, this course came along. Thank you, Lita. I have now re-examined all my procedures, making smarter and more efficient use of time and resources, and overall being more profitable. So this course is jam-packed with information that will help you navigate your own business, whether you've been at it for a couple of years or just starting out. And I certainly wish that I had had something like this in my early days, as I would have been so scared and unsure of myself when I was submitting proposals. So this course will give you tools that you need to figure out your hourly rate and go step-by-step step into building up a proposal, utilizing your own copy of this formula-infused spreadsheet, as well as how to present that proposal. And not to mention, I do share some enlightening case studies um, that sh shares some of my mistakes and lessons learned that you can hopefully learn from. And it's loaded with information that's pertinent to you and you're a growing business because I've been where a lot of you are and I'm helping you navigate these unsure moments. So to visit or to sign up, you can visit members.thephotomanagers.com backslash academy. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee in case you don't like it. So I will end this presentation with this little comic from High and Lois. Lois is looking through an old photo album and her daughter Doc comes up and asks her what she's doing. They reminisce about who's in the pictures and Dot recognizes that her baby sister, Trixie, isn't in any of the albums. Mom admits that she stopped making books and the photos are all stored up in the cloud. And poor Trixie is hoping that the sun will bring the photos down from the cloud since she wants to see them. And it is so true that our kids absolutely love seeing themselves in print. Our clients need us. Our services help families who otherwise don't have the time to do this themselves. They're out there. You, we just need to find them. So which brings me to the end of my presentation where I can open it up for Q&A. And since I started this with a picture of my favorite fur baby, I'm now ending with him showing everyone how much he loves photo books, too. And he would hire you in a heartbeat. So I'm going <laughs> to stop sharing and uh, address some questions. And I know I went really fast. So no, that's oh. great. And Isabel, well, you did a wonderful job. That was a. Uh... It's a lot. And, you know, it's interesting listening to you because my, one of my first, the, when I started my whole business before I started the whole photo manager stuff was to make a photo was to make photo books for people. That was my passion. And, um, uh, I just remember the, you know, the anxiety around charging and the mistakes I made and, and the one friend I did a job for. And then when I gave her the book, I sent her the invoice when I had put our, I mean, it was crazy how much time I put it and she was shocked at the price because I didn't even know enough to communicate with her through the process, like, you know, how much to charge. So a right. course like this or learning from people's experience like this is invaluable. So people don't make the same mistake. Oh so. yeah. I mean, I didn't give my clients, my friend clients, 
an estimate. I just, they yeah, said, oh, make me a book. I'm like, okay. And then I'd okay. send them the invoice. And even that very first one, which was only $127 charging a rate of $14 per hour. I was like shaking. So it's nerve wracking. All right. So Isabel, do we have questions there from people? We do. The first question um, is about your spreadsheet and how long it took you to develop that. So uh, hours, days, months, I mean, it has evolved over the last six years. Um, I love spreadsheets. So the first iteration, probably a few hours, but again, I've been tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it. So. And one of the benefits, of course, of the course is that um, you'll get access to the spreadsheet. Um, so you won't have to re recreate it if if that would be helpful. Um, the next question is, how do you price companion books? So it depends if they want a smaller version of the companion book or if they want the same size. Um, the printer I use has a companion book like a smaller version that they offer at checkout. And so I usually go through that process um, when I'm pricing up a book and input all the information to find out what the companion book price would be. Um, but that's the, it's a teeny tiny version of it. I do give my clients the option to get a duplicate, the exact same. So if someone's ordering a 10 by 10 book, they can get another 10 by 10 book. And then they, I charge them. So my spreadsheet was, had the, book cost at the top and the time cost at the bottom, they basically get that book cost with a markup um, tacked onto it. And I say that's the cost of a companion book. If it's the a teeny tiny version, then I usually use the vendor's price and I mark that up because it's cheaper. It's a smaller book. And who is um, the course for? Does it work for beginners? Absolutely. And um, someone's saying that they're new and it will take um, them longer as they're getting used to all the components and they don't feel comfortable charging as much because the product won't be as well done as it will be a year from now. Should they charge it or lower rate? Um, you know, that's completely based on how comfortable they are in the course. There is a spreadsheet that um, helps calculate what an hourly rate for someone should be uh, based on their out-of-pocket monthly expenses and how many hours they plan on working. So that that spreadsheet would help identify a starting point for an hourly rate. Um, and then you can mark that up as much as you want or need to based on your own experience. And if you think you've got more experience, you can always charge more. And if you have less experience, you can charge less. That answer the question. That's great. Thank you, Lita. Um, and how many hours would you say that you work approximately per week on photo books? Um, it varies based on my workload and maybe 10, 15 per week consistently, because I do digital organizing too. And can you um, restate again your preferred printer for photo books? So I didn't name them by name because they're one of our partners with the photo managers. I'm not sure if we named them. Is it, uh, is it Miller's? Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing people may, some people may understand, but if <clears throat> you have to be a professional, some, there's consumer, there's a B2C books, business to consumers, and well, that would be Shutterfly and Blurb and all, so many that you know, but then there's B2B, business to business, and like professional photographers, you know, the, those beautiful wedding books that you get, those are business to business printers. And that's, uh, you have to have a business and to get that kind of pricing and to also even be able to order through their website. So one that you use, is Miller's the only one? Because there's others that people use as well that- Yeah, that so B2B. Miller's Miller's is my preferred. Um, their quality and their customer service is top notch. Um, but I have printed with Blurb, I've printed with Printique, I've printed with Pickaboo, I've printed with 
MPix, Mixbook, and Shutterfly. So the, yeah, those are the consumer and Miller's. Then there's others that um, like Mix MPix is the consumer part of Miller's, which is a, and they're in like the Midwest. I forget, but their shipping I know is phenomenal. Like the next day, yes, but. I think they're Missouri. And um, the number that shows up sort of at the bottom of your spreadsheet, the final number, is that an estimate or a set price? So the 617 that popped out, that is what I would submit to a client. Um, I don't use cents in my proposal, so I'd probably round to 618. I prefer even numbers. Might even round to 620, just make it prettier. Um, but yeah, it's it's not enough. I mean, that is, that's my quote, and that's what I bill them for. And then I hope that I'll design faster or that I'll cull faster or that um, I'll, I'll do it better. But that is the quote that I give to the client. And what design software do you use? So I've been using InDesign. And did you know InDesign? <laughs> I'm going to ask you something. Did you know InDesign before you started designing books or is that something that you learned over time? So when I was in corporate construction, um, I did a little stint in business development after I was a project manager and being part of the marketing team, uh, we did an InDesign training, um, like an all-day training. So I had done that, but I wasn't a designer at all. Um, and then, yeah, it's it's been self-taught, taking courses, online courses, reading, trial and error. There's another photo manager who kind of has somewhat mentored me and I have picked up the phone and we did like an hour on the phone where she kind of talked to me about some of the ways she uses InDesign. So other than the one day training about 15 years ago, the rest has been self-taught. And how are you accounting for the costs of your design software and any other gallery costs? So a couple ways. I mean, my hourly rate is built up. Um, so the, there's a spreadsheet that I have and it kind of outlines what my monthly expenditures are. And then it also tacks on how many hours per week or per month I work. And then that's what kicks out my hourly rate. Well, I bump that up to have some fluff. So in my hourly rate, all my expenses are kind of accounted for. So I don't, it, it's not part of the photo book estimate. It's, it's built into my rate, basically. And as far as the pricing that you um, present to the clients, do you give a breakdown or just a grand total? So lesson learned, I used to give a breakdown and that ended up biting me and biting me. And I don't anymore. And I give them one price and I tell them what's included in that price, but I don't say my time is this book is this. I say all these things are included and here's the price. And can you share a little bit more about um, the digital organizing side of your business and how that complements the photo book side? So ideally, if a client gives me a mess of photos and she wants a photo book, but she wants them organized too, we go through the whole organizing process first. Um, I get rid of duplicates. I organize. Um, I collect from various devices, thumb drives, SD cards, CDs. I do the organizing. I use Lightroom Classic to organize. Um, and then from there, once it's organized, renamed, redated, the organizing is done, then we can go and segue into a book project. Um, crazily though, I had a client that wanted her photos organized, but she also wanted a book for her son who's graduating high school and it was COVID. And she really wanted to gift him this book in time for graduation. We were all emotional and wanting the best we could give our kids. So I said, okay, we're not going to organize. We're just, we're going to get him this book because he's been through a really hard year. So I, my, my selection time for his book was longer and she knew it would be, but we were both willing to take the time to manually 
look through photos for his book than to have them be organized first, if that makes sense. Because the end product and that book was so important for that particular year. And we have a couple of questions uh, regarding the productivity factor that's in your spreadsheet. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, so that's actually relatively new. Um, it actually came from a profitability live or one of the photo managers courses. I think that I took this summer where it was like um, a productivity coach was on the call. And she said, you know, we can work for 10 hours or eight hours or six hours but we're not always going to be the most effective that whole time. You know, we're going to, we're going to walk away or we're going to check email real quick. Like our, our productivity isn't quite, you know, 10 hours. So put in a little bit of a product, you know, this productivity factor to, to allow yourself that, that leeway and that cushion uh, to get a project done. So I now include a productivity factor, which I also call contingency and that's just something from my construction days that you'll always, there'll always be some sort of unforeseen thing that might happen or might pop up and you just want to have that little safety and it's, it's only a 10% of your total, total hours. And we have a couple of questions about the editing process. The first one is um, how many edits does your price include? So it's one set of edits. So I send the client the book and say, okay, review it and tell me what you want changed and I'll change it once. And then a question kind of um, jumping from that, but a, a little bit different, but similar. Um, how do you set a timeline with your clients? Someone says there's, they've struggled with clients who don't get back to them um, with their feedback and the project lingers endlessly. So that's tough. Um, I'm actually, I've encountered that um, recently too. And it's it's hard because you want to be sensitive to that client. You don't know what's going on in their life, if there's something personal happening, um, but you also want to keep things going because when something stops and you have to restart, then you, you lose that momentum. I do have a clause or a statement, whatever, um, in my contract that um, you know, I commit to responding to my clients in 24 hours and I expect them to, you know, respond to me in 24 to 48 hours. And I think that I say, if I haven't heard from you in more than a week, or if I haven't gotten an answer, then there will be a startup fee charged. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to have to use that, but it is in you know, my contract. And so I guess if someone has at least that verbiage to fall back to and say, okay, you know, you call the client say, look, I, I don't know what's going on, but I'd love to keep this going. Um, you know, just as an FYI, we do have this timeline and I do have this clause in my contract and we're losing time. We're losing momentum. If you don't want to go on and just kind of talk to them. Um, and remind the client that this is part of your agreement. And if you have to pause, then you will put them, um, you'll put other clients in front of them and that they will be moved to, to the back of the line. Um, I pretty much had to do that with a client and she finally picked up the phone and called me. We had gone five months without talking. So it, it sucks. So I, I hear you. And as far as your estimate goes, does that include a layout preview or approval of the photos that you've chosen to use? Yeah, so it it goes so many different ways. And a lot of my photo book um, quotes are custom. So I have a 20 minute intake call with a client to find out you know, why they wanna hire me or to find out if they're gonna hire me. And then after that, they get a comprehensive questionnaire to find out what kind of book they want and what, you know, what they want from me. And in that questionnaire, I ask them, are you sending me all the photos you want in a book? Or are you going to want me to select? And so if they want me to select and th then they send it to me and I create the proposal, the calling time is part of my proposal. And then the approval of those photos are also there's. I can have a line item for the approval and I load into 
um, Smug Mug. I create a gallery and I say, these are the photos I've selected for your project. What do you think? And if they don't want it, they put in the comments, no. Or if they want to add something, then they send me more photos. And it's usually just, we only go back and forth like once. I, I don't go, it's not a consistent back and forth. So it's not a big time suck. The, the time of culling takes a lot longer than me, you know, adding another photo or taking one out. So I, I don't really add much time um, and they, they do get to approve it. And how do you share um, those layouts for approval with clients? So that also gets loaded into Smug Mug. Um, so the same way that I create a gallery of the photos I've selected for them, I create a gallery of the spreads of the book um, because I I think that we are all visual people. So I want them to be able to see what the book will look like when it's open versus seeing one page at a time. And so I create spreads um, and design allows you to export spreads. I load those spreads into Smug Mug in order and they get to view their book either on a computer or on their phone. And then they say yay or nay. All right, I think that is the end of most of the questions um, specifically related to pricing and the course. Um, if I missed any, please let me know. But again, just as a reminder, uh, we're not really answering too many questions about the how-to of design. We did answer a couple, um, but that is its own course in and of itself. Um, so please do uh, reach out to other photo organizers and see what they're doing and using as far as software and the how-to. Um, oh, we have a question about um, the initial deposit amount. So I do 50% up front. Um, so it's 50% up front and then 50% when I deliver the book. Um, if it's a really pricey book and that seems to be too much for clients, I'll do 20% up front, 50% um, at first draft review, and then the balance upon completion. And um, one final question is, um, do you only work with digital photos? Um, yes, in that, if someone has a collection of printed photos, like old family photos, I have a partner here in town who does all my printed projects. And so she gets them, she organizes them, she gets them scanned, and then I get them back to make the book. Um, I, I don't, I won't like take physical photos and put them into uh, an album. Um, if a client would want me to, I, I don't, have a problem with it just nobody has asked me to work with print photos into like a scrapbook or an album and you know i think what i like about the um about what you mentioned about you know you have your partner there as an, another member of the photo managers when we started right before everybody came on you said how when you first started five and a half years ago you thought you were going to offer everything right scanning printed photo right. organizing photo books and and that's something that we we talk quite a bit about, right? The importance of doing what you love and outsourcing the rest. It takes time to know that. You, know, you don't know when you first start what it is that you really enjoy doing and how to be profitable at it. But now right. that lead has narrowed that down, right? You know that you like making photo books and digital photo organizing. And so you're not turning a client away if they have printed photos because you have somebody that you can exactly that business on to, Exactly. Right? And she's a partner. And I have a photo scanner right behind me and I don't use it. So a big paperweight. <laughs> there are a lot more questions coming in. I, you know what, we have three more minutes here before I just want to stay on time. I guess I'm going to look at one of these that, um, oh, let's see, a lot of things. You know, I think a little bit about a uh, text. Um, how much text do you add? Do you limit that? And um, do you deliver the client, the photo book yourself, or do they, uh, do you have it sent to them? So I'll answer that one first, because I'm huge on quality control. Mm -hmm. I'm huge on that whole white glove service that A, I want to make sure that everything is perfect. And B, I want to, I package it up. I, I have 
white bags and blue paper because those are my colors and I, I package it at, up nicely. So it comes to me. I have to approve it. I have sent books. I haven't sent them back, but I've had to ask for reprints. Um, and yeah, so now I hand deliver. If someone's local, I will drive it out to them. If they're not local, I do trust the Miller's product. And so I have shipped directly to a client um, in that regard. Um, text, I have no limits on text. Um, you know, InDesign is a very robust um, design software and can handle, you know, book layouts, magazine layouts. So it, I haven't had a book with a ton of text, but a former client just reached out to me yesterday and she sent me six pages of text on a Word document that she wants in a book honoring her late grandmother. And so now I get to figure out how to incorporate that into a book. And I'm more than happy to do it. Um, again, we're in the business of storytelling. And if I don't know how to do something, I'll find out. And actually, there's someone here locally who just did a very similar book. So she's she's on my list of people to call. Wonderful. All right, everybody. Well, thanks. We've had a lot of great questions. And um, thanks. Uh, we can you know keep going on and on. But I think uh, the, we're excited about offering this course. It's been something in development for a long time. Nita's put a tremendous amount of time into it. And also, she's given a great amount of information. And she's speaking at our conference on pricing photo books as well. So uh, you can hear and learn quite a bit from Lita. Everybody's saying great job. Thank you so much. So uh, oh, thanks, okay. everybody. Uh, Lita, again, thank you much for your time and have a great day. Thanks. We look forward to bye, um, bringing you more engaging training like this. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, guys.